All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke Good. Check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely hit that subscribe here on YouTube. So today, I'm in Power BI. Got this uh, dashboard that I put together for uh, Stark Industries that shows year over year revenues, right? So, the takeaway from this video is you're going to learn how to do a year over year comparison between two measures. So, digging into this, if you know anything about the movies, you know Stark Industries lost half of their customer base. So, uh, they can be forgiven for being tw down 12% in year over year uh, revenues. And then you can use this dashboard to drill into why they're down 12% year over year. Here are my companies that contribute positively. And here are my companies that contribute negatively to that uh, year over year uh, variance. So I can also look at this by division. If I go in here, let's take a look at maybe technology. And I can see that technology, oh, I have multiple selections going on here. Let's just take a look at technology. Technology's up 113.6% uh, year over year, driven by uh, Wonka Industries, apparently chocolate technology. And so I can also take a look, uh, let's take a look at transportation. And I'm down 5.6% year over year. So I have that flexibility to kind of drill into the data, right? Cyberdyne Systems uh, contributing negatively to my variance. Those Terminators aren't flying off the shelves like they used to. So I can look at that, uh, that variance um, by month, right, and get those numbers. And obviously daily here I can see... Uh, where my biggest uh, variances uh, lie. So, how do we create something like this? Just having a little fun with this uh, with this dashboard. I think once you get this piece, um, you know the rest of the dashboard just kind of kind of falls into place. Obviously, your formatting has to be uh, pretty good, but uh, you know get you the uh, basics up and running. So this is what the data looks like underneath the hood, right? We've got sales order revenue. I'm only interested in revenue, not profits right now. So just revenue. So I'm not uh, looking at costs. Uh, I care about my customer. I care about the internal division and the order date. This is at an order ID, order line uh, level green. So let's go in here. In order to create um, this analysis, you have to have a calendar table, right? So that's a great thing about DAX. I can come over here and I'm going to say new table and then I'm going to paste in some values here. Don't be too intimidated. Basically what we have here, we have the, uh, we have the calendar function that is going to generate uh, a table with a single column name date that contains every date between January 1st, 2017 and 1231, 2018. It's going to take that, uh, those dates and it's going to combine, because I have the generate function, it takes in two tables. It's gonna take in base calendar, which is essentially the calendar function, which I said, and it's gonna combine that with the result of the row function. And the row in the row function, we're telling it to um, parse out the year, right? from our from our year date which is based upon the base date which is based upon the date from calendar right uh, we've got a month number we've got various different parts date parts here and so once I hit enter I'll have this calendar table you'll see show up over here on this side right and that's great and I'm gonna close that up a little bit and, and now that I'm on my calendar table let's mark this as a date table and so by marking it as a date table, I'm just telling Power BI that I'm using a custom date table. It's going to help my built-in DAX time functions run uh, a little bit smoother. And so I'm going to select date, say OK. And it's important to know that when you specify your own date table, Power BI does not auto-create the hierarchies that it would otherwise build into your model on your behalf, right? So now that we have this, uh, just a little house cleaning. I don't want this to summarize. Let's go in here. Don't summarize. Go in here. Don't summarize. Perfect. So now uh, let's create, well, let's go to the data model first, right? Let's bring the date over here. And I always like to go in, I always like to check, right? Check the properties. And we're lined up, we got the date here, you know, with the, um, 
uh, with the with the date here say okay perfect I'm gonna move that calendar table over here because I like to follow the path of the arrows all right so now let's create a measure table right I'm gonna enter data here we go <laughs> and let's call this um, key measures all right let's load that it's gonna come in with uh, column one that's fine got my key measures table so now I can start putting stuffing measures in here uh, all right now we're gonna create the the revenue last year measure so let's call this revenue last year and that is going to be equal to the sum of our industrial company data sales order revenue right and we're gonna say let's wrap this in a calculate calculate that sum and then our expression is going to be same period last year based upon our calendar table date right not our sales order date our calendar table date so then once I do that I will have revenue last year show up oh it shows up in my calendar table that's okay so if you want to know how to move something here you just select it you go to modeling and then you'll see a home table just move that to key measures so now I have that here let's get rid of this column one let's delete that delete perfect all right so now now I have my revenue last year let's go ahead and create a table and just want to show you that we have a date and let's format this let's format this date as date time let's format it as this right here so just want to show you that I do have a date uh, starting from January 1st 2017 all the way to 1231 2018 and we can expand this out a little bit right and I'm gonna bring in my industrial company sales order revenue and bring in our revenue last year so you'll notice since I don't have any 2016 data I don't have any values for revenue last year right makes sense but once I get to 2018 now that revenue last year starts filling in and it's great in that I can see that on January 1st 2018 I didn't have any uh, orders I didn't have any revenue but in the previous year I did right so that's powerful right there now we can calculate the difference year over year uh, for each of our dates and then I'm just gonna do a little formatting here revenue last year let's make this a dollar sign uh, let's make that English currency perfect don't need that all right so now we're formatted so now let's make a difference right <laughs> well let's let's make a difference in life but let's also make a difference between our two measures right so let's go to uh, new measure here and then let's call this um, whoops difference between uh, current year and uh, last year right and that's going to be equal to our sum of industrial let's do this sum of our industrial company data sales order revenue or whichever measure uh, you want to use minus our sales order last year oops uh, what do we got sorry revenue last year there we go uh, it's that simple right and we have that and I keep putting it in the wrong table here so we're gonna go to modeling and just move that to our uh, our key measures that'll show up down here perfect and let's uh, let's format it while we are here and then let's bring it over highlight our table and bring in that difference and you'll see that I do have differences now um, for 2017 which may not you know I may not care about that but I definitely care about the 2018 data right so looking at our January 1st you can see I have nothing here then revenue for last year that's gonna give me that negative variance right when I do have two values it's gonna do the subtraction as we would expect and so now I'm gonna take our year let's put that on the uh, let's sorry let's go here let's get off of that let's put the year on a page level filter and let's go to basic filtering and I only want to see 2018 I only have two years so 
I don't want to see 2017. I only want to see 2018, right? Now, if you had more than two years, you can use uh, you can use DAX to hide uh, values from the first year. You can use some combination of is blank. But um, you know, since I only have two years, I'm just going to filter one year out. And then once I have this, I'm just going to copy and paste here. We can turn that into um, a chart here. And then I can get, I only want to show the difference. So let's get rid of these other guys. And so now on a daily basis, you can see that I have uh, differences here on that 4 3 2018. I have a huge variance, right? But I want to show this not at a daily basis. I want to show this at the year month level. So I'm going to drag the year month over here, get rid of date. And we've got this nice symmetric pattern. What I can do is I can go in here, I'm going to sort by. Uh, year month right and whoops so that is backwards let's do what is it descending uh, ascending uh, it's one of these there we go so now I got my January February March April May all right perfect so the key to that was I had to go to my year month here right and the sort by column make sure I'm sorting by year month number even though year month is in the viz I want to sort it by year month number so that's how we do that right there and now I've got, you know, January, February, as you can see, January, February, March. I've got those uh, different values here. I've got those months in order showing my differences. So I can go in here and let's do a little, um, you know, turn the data labels on, right? Have a little fun with it. You can also do some, uh, some conditional some conditional formatting if you want to show red positive and uh, black negative. So if I go in here and Power BI hides this really good. I you know I don't know why they love to torture you here. So I can go to conditional formatting, right? Sometimes I look for this. I'm like, where is this? You have to look for the three dots uh, on the data colors. Go into conditional formatting, and then for color scale, I'm going to change that to rules. And we're going to base that off our difference. And so now I can say if the value is greater than or equal to zero and less than, uh, let's say, you know, 10 million. I don't have that much uh, data. Let's see. That should be 10 million. Uh, let's make this uh, black. And then I can add a rule here. So now if I'm negative 10 million, Right, and less than, let's go negative one cent. I can make that red, say okay, and you'll see I've got that, that change here. So again, once you have this, you can make this, and then just have a little fun with it. Like I say, going back to the year-over-year -year revenue comparison, have a little fun with it. Incorporate it into your uh, your dashboard. Um, if you're looking for a dashboard template, reach out to me on anthonysmoke.com. You know, maybe for a small investment, I'll uh, uh, I can send you uh, my template that I have here along with the data. So, uh, in any event, this has been uh, Anthony Smoke. Hope you enjoyed this tip. Get out there and do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.